Well, the numbers are moving in the wrong direction. Unfortunately, COVID-19 cases are on the rise in at least 42 states, fueled by, of course, the Delta variant. Now, health officials say that the highest infection rates are in areas with the lowest vaccination rates. And back with us to talk about this is ER Dr. Robert Davidson, who is also an executive director of the Committee to Protect Healthcare. Thanks for joining us again, Dr. Davidson. Thank you for having me. So, you know, New York City saw cases double in just one week and all COVID patients in LA County hospitals are unvaccinated, according to officials. Now, the numbers aren't as high as they once were, but how concerned are you and how concerned should we be in these increases we're seeing across the country? Listen, I think if you're an unvaccinated individual, you should be extremely concerned because that's going to protect you from getting hospitalized or from dying from COVID. Um, the other group of people who should be concerned are people who live in communities that have a high rate of unvaccinated people. It's, it's a place where I work. It's about 40 percent. And, you know, based on a, a, a couple of shifts this week and talking with patients who don't want the vaccine, I had someone tell me they were afraid of it because of the ingredients. When I asked them, you know, what ingredients, they said, well, I don't really know what's in it. And so there's a large group of people that are unfortunately being poisoned by an entire media uh, eco ecosystem on the right that is telling them to be afraid of these vaccines and those communities are going to be in trouble. Yeah, it's uh, to the point of it's disgusting, Dr. Davidson. We've been over this time and time again, and it really seems like we don't need to take you're the doctor. I don't need one course at any medical school to know just basic facts here. Um, and so, you know, as a mother, I'm worried about my daughter who still can't, doesn't qualify for the vaccine and all these people who are just out there spreading this Delta variant. I wanna know though, we just finished a major holiday, right? July 4th. Is there a connection, the timing of these increases that you're seeing here and, and the cities and states reopening? Well, I think certainly as people come together more, you're going to see more transmission. But, you know, I think at this point, because it's so dependent on vaccination status and really the status yeah. of the community, this is just going to be unfortunately like a, a bit of whack-a-mole mm -hmm. for, for we don't know how long. Could be yeah. years and years in, in communities that have low vaccination rates. And, and I will say, like the patient I talked to, I blame the individuals less. I blame an entire, you know, like yeah. I said, media right. ecosystem and political party that's just feeding them disinformation. But there's another group of a low vaccination status, and it's really in, in uh, communities of color. There's there's some pockets yeah. of low vaccination, yeah. and that has very, very little to do with with disinformation on the right. And it has mm -hmm. to do with people being hesitant with disparities in healthcare that mm -hmm. have been going on for generations. And, and on that, that is on us. That is on public health. Yeah. That is on doctors. That is on local and, and, and state and federal government to to get the vaccine into those communities, you know, get rid of the barriers and mm -hmm. and get those numbers up. Yeah, that's so true. And it doesn't help that there's been some misinformation and confusion about a lot of things. The newest one is the booster shots. Pfizer announced that it's working on them. The CDC and the FDA says, oh, wait, we don't need them right now. And Israel has taken it a step further and started distributing them to those immunocompromised people. So do you think we'll eventually see that happen here where we'll just make everybody get the booster shot or at least need it? I think eventually it's pretty likely, but I feel very comfortable that the FDA, the CDC, public health uh, experts across the country are telling us that the protection is still there, that the time is not yet to have mass mass boosters. And, uh, you know, we'll just wait until the data shows us that we need it. Oh, there's an entertainment reporter, Kat Sadler. Um, she posted a warning, Dr. Davidson, about COVID. She says she got sick after being vaccinated. So how often are you seeing that happen? Because anecdotally, I hear about this person or that person. What can you tell us about this? I will tell you that any person I have seen that has been sick enough to be hospitalized, and I think that the numbers prove this in LA County and, and Missouri, uh, anyone who's been sick enough to be hospitalized, certainly who's died, it's about 99% are unvaccinated. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, you can still catch coronavirus. You can still get sick. And there's the tiniest chance that you could get sick enough to get hospitalized. But really, if you're vaccinated, um, you can 
breathe free and you can know that you're going to be protected 99 point some odd percent of the time. Mm. Well, since we last spoke, the FDA issued a warning about the J&J vaccine and a rare nerve condition. Now, they happen about 100 cases out of about 13 million shots. So what guidance do you have for people who are still resistant in giving any vaccine? You mentioned it before people said something about the ingredients, but what about those people that are just afraid of reactions and allergies? Listen, I, I think people should talk to their doctors. Uh, frankly, uh, folks that they've been seeing for years and decades that they trust, there's vaccines available in this country. And if there is concern about one of them, like J&J, &J, if there is, you know, even if it's only 100 out of 13 million, and that is an incredibly low number, you know, the chance of having serious complications from COVID-19 or dying from COVID-19 is way higher. But if there is concern, then you have two other options, and, and you should choose one of those if that's what gets you vaccinated. Mm. Kids um, 12, under 12 rather, are not currently eligible. My daughter's nine and a half um, for the vaccine. Is there a timeline? When can they get the shots? Because school starts, you know, in, in mm -hmm. less than a month. Right. There's no way that there's going to be time to get them vaccinated before school because you need, you know, about five weeks between the two shots and then two weeks after. And so, you know, I think we just wait. I mean, the reality is we need the numbers. Mm -hmm. We can't rush this. If, if they rush this, even if everything ends up being fine, if they rush it, that just builds more distrust. And yeah. so, you know, I'm hoping by the end of this calendar year or certainly into next spring for the next semester after the after the holidays, that we can get those kids or at least a portion of those kids vaccinated. Um, but, you know, COVID-19, while it is not as deadly for kids, uh, we see a lot of complications in kids when they get it. So I'm personally going to my school board meeting next week and advocating that they have unvaccinated mm -hmm. kids wearing masks when they start the school year uh, because we need to protect yeah. those little ones. You know, they don't have any say in this. They just have to do what the adults say. So we got to do what's right for them. Yeah, that was going to be my follow up to you. Mm -hmm. Do you recommend mask? And it sounds like you're saying until we can get more of these kids vaccinated, that that's what needs to happen. Mm -hmm. um, Dr. Rob Davis, sure. thanks so much for your expertise and for being on the front lines and fighting the good fight. We appreciate it. Uh, we're right back. Thank you.